It's time for Recipe of the Day. Yesterday, I told you about my chicken meatloaf recipe, and I told you that you could skip the seasonings in that recipe and instead use my meatloaf seasoning blend, and it is a wonderful thing to put in meatloaf. I find it especially good in a beef meatloaf. The flavors just go really well together, so it is a great option, but for any meatloaf, you can mix up a half cup of it, that's how much this makes, and have it in a jar, and then you just measure about four teaspoons per pound of meat that you want to season, and you'll just always have it there to use. But as with all of my seasoning blends, I know I've told you this before, I give the recipe both for the full half cup and the amounts for if you just want to make two tablespoons. I always give the half cup amount and the two tablespoons amount, so you can just make enough for essentially one meatloaf. Two tablespoons is going to be enough to season one and one third pounds of meat. So what is meatloaf seasoning exactly? My goal with this blend was to mimic the flavors of the McCormick's meatloaf seasoning packet, but without all of the extra ingredients. So if you actually look at the McCormick's ingredient list, it does have things like onion, salt, spices, paprika, celery seed, black pepper, the things that are in my recipe, but it also has hydrolyzed corn gluten, soy protein, and wheat gluten, caramel color, malted barley flour, yeast extract, and natural flavor. I'm not saying that all of those things are bad. I'm just saying, why don't we just go in with the seasonings that we want, you know? So that is, I think, everything I have to say about this recipe. It's like the McCormick's meatloaf seasoning. You can make a half cup batch or a two tablespoon batch. If you make the two tablespoon batch, it seasons one and one third pounds of meat. If you make the full batch, you'll use about four teaspoons of it per pound of meat. So if you have the whole half cup of it in your pantry, you would just scoop out four teaspoons per pound of meat for the meatloaf that you're making. And I will also say that in the show notes for this podcast episode, I will link to my seasoning blends page on my site, The Cookful, and you can bookmark that because all of these seasonings are like this one in that I give you the full amount for making a full batch, and I also give you those smaller amounts for just making two tablespoons, and I know you find it handy. I find it handy if you're online and you're making somebody's recipe and it calls for, you know, taco seasoning, fajita seasoning, meatloaf seasoning, if it calls for Cajun seasoning. You don't want to necessarily have to make a whole batch of that or buy a whole container, so you can just come over to your bookmarked seasoning landing page and find the recipe for just making the two tablespoons, right? So I will make sure to link to my seasonings page for you so you can always find all of those when you need them. As to the meatloaf seasoning, what goes into here? It is four and a half teaspoons of salt, four and a half teaspoons of brown sugar. So there's some nice sweetness in there, which I really think pairs well with the glaze that's often on meatloaf, which is, you know, sometimes barbecue sauce or has some like ketchup or other sweet-ish things in there. I love the brown sugar for that. Then you're doing three teaspoons of paprika. Now, this is most standardly just your regular sweet paprika that is usually just labeled paprika, but you can use some or all smoked paprika and some or all hot paprika if you want to. So you have three teaspoons of paprika. You could do one teaspoon of each of those three kinds, the smoked, the hot, and the regular, or like maybe two teaspoons of smoked paprika and one teaspoon of regular. That would be great as well. I don't think I would do the full three teaspoons of smoked or of hot. I think that might be overpowering. Then you're also adding three teaspoons of garlic powder, three teaspoons of onion powder, one and a half teaspoons of celery seed. I think that is actually the distinctive part of the McCormick's blend. So that is in there for sure. If you don't like celery seed, just leave it out. That is totally fine. I would probably add a little bit more of the garlic powder and onion powder in that case, like three quarters of a teaspoon each more of those two. Okay. So celery seed, I said, then one and a half teaspoons of dry mustard. So you know, dried mustard powder, it just has that little bit of heat. And also, like I said about the brown sugar, I think it's going to tie in really nicely with the glaze. And then one and a half teaspoons of dried thyme for that little bit of herby flavor and one and a half teaspoons of black pepper. And then you just mix that all up, store it in a jar in your pantry and use four teaspoons per pound of meat whenever you're making a meatloaf. I'm also just going to quickly run through the ingredients for making two tablespoons so that you no. It's one and a quarter teaspoons of salt, one and a quarter teaspoons of brown sugar, three quarters of a teaspoon of paprika, three quarters of a teaspoon of garlic powder, three quarters of a teaspoon
teaspoon of onion powder, a quarter teaspoon rounded of celery seed. So that's just a little bit more than a quarter teaspoon, a quarter teaspoon rounded of the dry mustard, a quarter teaspoon rounded of the dried thyme, and a quarter teaspoon rounded of the black pepper. And I'll just remind you that makes two tablespoons, which is essentially the equivalent of six teaspoons. So it is enough for one and one third pounds of ground meat when you make the two tablespoons. Okay, I will put the link to this recipe in the show notes for this podcast episode, or you can head to cookthestory.com slash ROTD and get it there. And I would love to ask a favor of you. You know, I really appreciate that you're listening. And if you're loving this show, it'd really, really help me out if you could leave a rating and review over on Apple Podcasts. That is a great place. Even if you don't usually listen on there, even if you don't have an Apple device, I think you can still get over to Apple Podcasts, find the show there and leave a review. I would really, really appreciate it. That helps more people find the show and that helps me grow my business, which I'm always trying to do. I am so grateful that you're listening. Thank you for being there. I hope you love this recipe. I'm Christine Pittman from cookthestory.com, thecookful.com, the all new chicken cookbook and from this podcast recipe of the day. I hope you have a great day. Let's get cooking.